Get ready. It's going to be a very, very intense journey. What's up, everyone, and welcome to episode 45 of Frame Skip. I am your host for the night, Austin Eller. I'm joined by the coach, Kyle Newman. How's it going, coach? Good. I got a fun fact. I've got an Elijah's fun yeah. fact. Is it that Texas shut down this week? No. 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 That's not it. The Amiibos for uh, Mario 3D World, the, uh, on, you know, when you look at the picture, it looks lame, but those Amiibos of the cat suit Mario and Peach are really detailed. He puts them on his nightstand so he can wake up and see them first thing in the morning every day. I do. I, I do not want to wake up and see Mario. That That's just like uh, they had uh, you could get like the collector's edition of Dying Light, which was like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And one of the things that you got was a uh, life size statue of one of like the nighttime zombies. I'm like, I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and see that. <laughs> Actually, what I wake up to is before I go to bed, I'll put like a like a Jordan, like a Bulls game or a Lakers game. And so throughout the night, you know, YouTube will go through all its files, right? And usually it's like this morning it was San Antonio and uh, Cleveland. So that's what I woke up. I woke up to the oh, Like James that championship series where San Antonio won? Yes. Yeah. I fell asleep once. I was watching a Sailor Moon movie on YouTube, and I woke up to a live-action German Sailor Moon movie. <laughs> See, this is how people ever. get radicalized. It's like some weird yeah, alternate reality. This is reality. how people get radicalized. Though. They fall asleep watching Magic the Gathering, Let's Play streams, and they wake up, and oh my god, they're enlisted in the Confederate of in <laughs> International Systems. Uh, sorry, the Confederacy of Independent <laughs> Systems. Sorry, I had a tickle in my throat. It made me sound like an idiot for a second. But yeah, you do that, uh -huh. then you're, you're fighting against the Jedi. Yeah. That's uh, uh, It's the pits. Well, you've heard them both. Uh, first off, we have George Cam Newton Loftus. Woo woo! George. Uh, I have a question for Elijah as someone who watches football. Yeah. I have a question for yeah. Austin as someone who I forgot right. watches football. Yeah, sometimes. Um, is Cam Newton the starting quarterback for the Patriots next season? I don't think so. Yeah, but Jared Stidham. I don't think so either. Not great, neither. Nope. <laughs> nope. They're just not going to have a quarterback. Who are we getting though? Because like as as free agency <laughs> looms in the NBA, I'm like, oh man, we should make all these moves. Like I, I think Drummond's available. Like on the on the. Did cast. you did you hear the newest rumor that the Panthers may trade a first and Christian McCaffrey for Deshaun Watson? But he would be really good with Deshaun Watson. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an odd yeah. decision. Uh, I want Deshaun Watson on the Patriots. That'd be incredible. And it's just one of those things oh, where, like, yeah. I don't know what we could give up for. And it's like, well, we could give up first round picks. We, like, never hit one of those. So what difference does it make? Um, <laughs> I, want, I want Deshaun Watson on the uh, Dolphins. I don't, because then uh, they're, I, we're never going to beat the Dolphins. <laughs> so I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want him on the Dolphins? Just so the Patriots can never beat him. Look, yeah, this like is the Dolphins are like our, no. our kryptonite for some reason. You, yeah. My best friend is a Dolphins fan. And, like, I, I'm not a Dolphins fan, but I'm all aboard the Dolphin boat. Whereas, like, you're I don't riding mind the Dolphin. You're, you're, just, you're on the Dolphin. I am, I am riding the Dolphin. So, speaking of Dolphins, we also are joined by the ladies' man, Elijah Steele. How's it going, Elijah? Now, this is, like, 8 to 20 weeks late, but Adonis was the mortal lover of the goddess Aphrodite <laughs> in Greek mythology. Yeah, that's where that comes from, yeah. Okay, in hold Ovid, on. What, first century, what? What's the yeah. nickname again? Uh, the Apex Adonis. The Apex Adonis. The, okay, the Apex Adonis Elijah Steele. I'm gonna have to get used to that one still. Uh, that, yeah, that, made, that was like four months ago. The thing that made me think of it, um, one of my best friends showed me a Christmas present that she got for me, but haven't hasn't been able to give to me yet. Mm -hmm. And it's the Apex Legends champion symbol, like for when you win. But it has my gamer tag in it, and it's a light. Nice. And I'm like, this is amazing. That's awesome. And I can't wait to get it because it's going to forever stay on my desk with me. And it's just, I've been all in Apex again lately. So it's just like, oh yeah, Apex Adonis. I forgot about that. That's you, baby. How could you forget? So guys, 
It's been a week. I haven't been on in a couple of weeks, but it sure has been. What has everyone been playing, Elijah? Um, the main things I've been playing are I've played a little bit of Fatal Frame Five. I'm on. It's not technically Drop Four. It's Special Interlude, which is straight up just another chapter of the game. Yeah. Um, which is like the fourth one. But I'm really, really liking the game. I'm finding it. So I stream the game. And there are two ways to control the camera. One is by having the Wii U gamepad and moving it around to mm -hmm. take the pictures. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But also, at the same time, if I'm sitting here all the time, I don't want to just be like flailing <laughs> around. And you can control just control it on the screen, which I'm like, all right, it makes sense. But then I forget about that. So I'm trying to move the, the gamepad. I'm like, it's not moving! <laughs> and I've died. I've almost died a couple times because of that. Can you explain what you do in Fatal Frame? Yes, I can. This is this is the first one I've ever played. Uh, they're not connected in any way, so you can like I'm playing five, and it makes no difference. Um, basically, you are a character that's kind of like a medium, and they use what is called a uh, camera obscura. And basically, it can trap souls in it. And so you're using the camera to basically battle the ghost. So you're basically the um, Instagram influencer of capturing ghosts. <laughs> Think of Ghostbusters, <laughs> yeah. but with a camera. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, the story is really interesting so far. And I, I'm all in on this series in general. I can't wait to play more. What's good about it is it's really creepy and yes. eerie and yes. they use um, sounds to mm -hmm. increase the intensity. Also, there is a shrine of dolls that I'm at currently and I hate dolls with a passion. Oh God. So when there are, there are dolls that are just sitting around and I'm like, you weren't there before. <laughs> I'm, I'm no. But the other game I've been playing very hardcore now, I'm back into the Division 2. I got the expansion, like, two weeks ago, I was level 30, gear score, like, 475. I'm now level 40, shade level, I think, 18. And the game is so fun. I thoroughly love the expansion. One of my big problems with the first game was just everywhere felt the exact same. And you go back to New York City in the expansion, but it's a whole new section of the city that you've never been in. And they even fixed that. Everywhere is, looks different. Everywhere feels different. Like, the one boss, uh, you're basically running along the shoreline at these, like, sunken, uh, um, like, the big ships cargo that ship? carry cargo. Yeah, there's another there's another word for it that I was trying to think of. Freighter? Um, freighter, thank you. Yeah. Have these, like, sunken freighters and everything, and you're running along the coastline because one of these freighters is where, like, that boss is basically holed up. Like, that's her hold. And, like, all the areas are so different. I'm really, really enjoying being back to this game. I'm going through all of the DLC, and I'm gearing up to do the raids, and... I've never done a raid in a game before, and my first raid might end up being the Division 2. That's awesome. When you say you've That's never, good. just out of curiosity, when you say you've never done a raid in a game before, do you mean you you never did one in Final Fantasy fourteen? I've never done a technical, like, one of the actual raids. Wow. I've done dungeons and everything, but I've never done one of the raids in the game. Okay. No, I was just going to say, I think Final Fantasy is the only raid I've ever done. I tried the ones in Destiny, but they were, like, impossibly hard. Oh yeah, so, we did try the Destiny one. You really for, need someone who's like already done it hard. like five times in Destiny. Yeah, yeah. Because I when I tried it, I think we tried the one and two like the second it came out, pretty much. And I did the same yeah. thing with one, and like I couldn't beat either of them. So we tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it didn't even matter. It didn't even matter. Right. Re do you remember when the first division was announced at E3? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's it looked, like, it, it, it looks so cool, man, because. You know, it was a post-apocalyptic New York City, basically. 
Yeah, right. after yeah. after a virus swept through around know, right? around Christmas so, time, you know, when there was a lot of snow on the ground. Funny story. Uh, I was super excited for the expansion for the Division Two, but because of everything going on, I'm like, I can't play the Division Two right now. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, I so I I literally I I could. It was a game I was loving playing, and I had to put it down. I'm like, I can't play this right now. Um, uh, but no, like you were saying about the division one and it looking so cool. The division two takes everything that one did and does it better. And then it takes everything that one did wrong and fixes it. The division two is such a great game. And I don't think it really gets the credit it deserves for turning around the series. And like, we'll talk more division later. I'm, I'm super excited for this game to continue. Is it too late to get into? Nope. Not at all. In fact, if you get the expansion, which for example, I got it on sale last month for eight bucks. Um, it comes with a free it free upgrades your character to level thirty so you can start the expansion even. Um and uh for example, yesterday I was on with Austin and Alden and we were running through some main missions, continuing their stories. Yeah, and I'm like pretty low I've only played maybe three or four hours and um, there's still a lot to do and it's it's yeah. a great game so is it a game where you do like a couple hours of solo and then you could start um co-oping to give you an idea i did the entire main quest line solo and so far we've done austin's entire main quest line co-op yeah i don't think i've ever played solo or if i have it's been maybe 20 or 30 minutes so how are the controls yeah. compared to other games like I don't know, Wolfenstein or Doom or Halo? Because it's first person, right? It's third person. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Oh. And and actually, we were just talking some about reason, last night. I thought night, it was first. The controls in that game are so good. Like, it it is such a good feeling game. It plays uh, pretty what? similar to modern Gears of War. It's like a cover-based yeah. shooter. So, like, right. we're, you know how in Gears, like, you press A or whatever, and it'll, like, take you over to that, you know, truck or whatever, and you'll hide behind it. It mm-hmm. works the same way. Yep. It's a little less tanky. It's not yeah, Gears, right. Gears is a little tanky and Division is not quite as as bad. So uh just one thing to keep in mind with the Division, it is a um like games as a service type thing. So like enemies can be bullet spongy, especially if it's like the um yeah. like the yellow, like harder enemies. I will at least give it the credit that it uses like the characters have armor on and what you're doing is you're pier- like piercing through the armor and then it'll actually start damaging the enemy. And once you get down to that, like damaging the enemy, they're not very bullet spongy because like even the hardest yellow enemies I can take down with a clip of my rifle. Right. It's just breaking through that armor. So at least it's giving, it's giving a reason for the enemies to be like that which the first game didn't do as well. You just see a guy in like a tank top and a, carrying a gun yeah. and shorts. I'm like, why is it taking me like 15 clips to take him out? <laughs> I shot this guy in the head 15 times and he's still alive and he's wearing yeah. a swimsuit. Yeah, that felt really like <laughs> Destiny inspired where like they were just like, yeah. well, that game does it so we can do it too. Um, and yeah. it, it, that seems to be the norm anymore, I've noticed, for uh, these different uh, what games of service games. Where like that that's just the kind of thing I'm vibe I've gotten from most of them. Because I've right. played quite a bit of Destiny and Destiny 2. But yeah, I, I think Division 2 is doing like everything right. And one of the big problems with the first one was the end game content. Everyone was like, So there's like no end game content and what content there is isn't good. And right from the get go, right on the day the Division 2 released. You had a whole bunch of end game content, and then they released their. They now have two raids for it, and like th- there's so much to do after the game. That's awesome. Like they they did played, such a great job with it. I played probably like twelve to fifteen hours of the first one, and I'm, like we're all nerds, but I think like what made me super nerd about that game was like I just love the UI in the first one, like the way yeah. the menus are integrated into the world. Like the first time I really noticed that was with another yes. Ubisoft game. It was. uh Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell. Uh, Blacklist? Yeah, uh, no, the one before that. Uh, Conviction. Um, the 360 exclusive yeah. one? Conviction. Oh, yeah. Or, no. Or, was Conviction 360 exclusive? Because I know Double Agent was. 
Uh, that was like an er- that was the earlier one, but like Conviction okay. was like when they made it like Jason Bourne meets Splinter Cell, okay. mm-hmm. and like the UI in that game was like the reason I kept playing, just because I thought it was so cool the way you could like mark enemies and like the way like they- you could see like the ghost of like the last time someone saw you, and they sort yeah. of transferred all that stuff and made it make sense in a live service game. And that yeah. was like one thing I really, no. really appreciated in uh in the first division. I'm excited to check out Division Two just because Division One it was like just forever Christmas, you know, because like the virus hit or yeah. whatever yeah. hit like on Black Friday, and so it was just perpetually mm-hmm. Christmas. And like that's awesome when you're playing that time of year. But um, a little, I live in Maine, coach here in Texas. I'm a little snowed out right now. I don't know about you guys, so I'm I'm. Really no, we, excited yeah. to play that game in a non perennial Christmas uh, setting. Well, and it's and, it's nice too because it's colorful and like yeah, the first one was very like dreary, very gray. gray. Yeah, yeah. So two just looks better. Like it looks so much more vivid and lively. And even though it's still about like a virus, which is still not exactly the best time to be playing that game, but it you know, you know what it is though because. At least in this game, we're doing something about it. Not that's just true. Sitting in our room, that's, that's, recording a podcast like a bunch of nerds. That's legitimately. <laughs> that's legitimately what helped me to get back into it because I'm like, oh, it's about all this. But I'm like, you know what? It the game's about doing something about making the world better again right. after all this. So I'm like, all right, I I I'm into that. Mm-hmm. But no, George, I know some people who will gladly play with you, and I'm completely not grooming everyone to get ready for the do the raids with me don't, um i know i know you're not wrong but just, god don't say grooming <laughs> like i don't love that elijah <laughs> fair enough no i i i want everybody to do the raids with me uh they added a so the big problem with the raids was they were super hard and apparently on console they were like literally unbeatable and ubisoft was like we don't see a problem with this and then eventually like all right we fixed it and then they added uh discovery difficulty which is much easier and it had matchmaking which the other difficulty doesn't so basically it's a much easier raid and i'm a much higher level than the raid needs because of i'm 10 levels higher because of the expansion so i'll i'm going to be doing a ton more damage and just it should be rather easy for all of us to do it awesome george hey, that's what i've been playing uh yeah what have I, you been playing i downloaded the division too because i really wanted to check it out and play with you guys um unfortunately like i complained about this a little bit last week i'm starting to get really frustrated both with sony and a bunch of third-party developers for just how large the games are on consoles uh i find that very frustrating where i Purposely went through, I played all of the Black Ops Cold War campaign, got all the single player trophies I could, because I just wanted to delete that off my console. And I was just like, all right, that'll clear up 60 gigabytes. Like, that's not insignificant. And then as soon as I did, it was hit with another update with like a 30 gigabyte patch. And I was just like, what, what could you possibly need another 30 gigabytes for, for zombies, multiplayer and for Warzone stuff, like all combined. And it's just really frustrating. Um, that like that game that I beat now still takes up 120 gigabytes just because I occasionally like to play multiplayer with some friends, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, to, to combat that I'm going through and I'm, I looked at like what games I could beat the fastest that are already on my PlayStation. And so I am focusing right now on immortals Phoenix rising. Nice. Which is a super fun game. It is like if the systems of a assassin's creed game, had a baby with the mechanics of Breath of the Wild. So, like, it's got, like, the stamina yep. bar. It's got, like, this sort of sense of wondery. Oh, sorry, wonder and discovery. We're just going to call that wonder. Um, and that game is, the like, wondery. really, really funny. Like, it, it's kind of annoying because it, yeah, it, it does the thing that Assassin's Creed does, where it's just, like, we're going to put you in a machine that lets you relive these experiences. I'm like, it would be kind of cool if I was just this person back in ancient Greece, just yeah. by some throats, like, I don't think you need the layer of sci-fi over it. And this game is about like this villain named, I think Typhon who goes through kicked every God of Olympus's ass and is slowly taking over the world. And 
Zeus goes to Prometheus and he's just like, look, I need your help. He's like, you don't need my help. You need this person's help. He's like, who's this person? He's like, let me tell you a story. And so it seems like the entire game is just like Prometheus telling Zeus's story. And I really like it because like you get really funny narration happening between Zeus and Prometheus. Like they're genuinely hysterical together where they just riff on Greek mythology with like through like the lens of like today and just like, wait, you turned into a bull so you could do what? You know, like it's just they're constantly asking questions where, <laughs> where like old Greek myths were just like, yeah, so then this happened and then he, the bull got her pregnant. And you're like, wait a second. That's strange. I don't know if we needed that. Um, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't a lot to do like 4000 years ago. What do you expect? So you just make up stories about bulls doing things to goats and yeah, uh, and singing a song about it. Right. Uh, but the game is yeah. super fun. Um it's I, I really didn't like Breath of the Wild, but this game just feels like Diet Breath of the Wild. And my favorite thing about it is like no weapon degradation. Yes. Which is super fun to just go through and like not be constantly worried about like, oh, crap, my last sword broke. Now what am I supposed to do? Um, so I really like that. And I really, really like the campaign for Black Ops Cold War. Uh, I think that it was super short, but it was really interesting because obviously there's a twist, but like, you get to choose which missions you do for a majority of the game. And then you kind of get to a, an end point and then you can make a decision. And like the game can go two wildly different ways. I don't want to spoil anything just because <clears throat> I know people buy that game and they play the multiplayer. They don't jump into the single player. So I don't want to be the person who ruins it for you. But I was really impressed with some of the risks they took. And there is one level where uh, it's like a drug induced level. And those are quickly becoming like some of my favorite expressions in video games. Far Cry 4. Um, just because I love the way they sort of break reality that they've spent so long constructing. And they just find interesting ways to like show right. you a drug trip as opposed to just like a lot of movies do. Um, it's just really interesting stuff, like the way they choose to to bend everything. I started, I started thinking about like a a piece I want to do just on like why that's important, like in the far cry games and like, even in like Arkham Asylum, like just the fact that like Batman wasn't like the yeah. apex predator, like in that sc mm -hmm. uh, scarecrow section, you know, like all that stuff I think is like really kind of fascinating just because it's always what sort of removes the power fantasy element from the player and really just sort of puts them up against the wall. Uh, I think that's just like narratively super interesting. So I'm going to dive into that a little bit more. Uh, I think on my blog, if you guys nice. want to read something, there's also the end of Uncharted Three. Oh yeah, absolutely, and that's like one of the I think oh god one of the yeah. strongest examples. Like uh, I think that's like probably why Uncharted Three is my favorite. Um, yep, really good stuff. That whole ending sequence, that lasts like a couple hours, is phenomenal. Yeah. So, is that all you've been playing though, George? Pretty much, yeah. Just those two. Sorry for waxing so poetic about those things, but. Really, no, really, enjoy, oh, really yeah. enjoy both of those. Coach, what have you been playing? Well, recently I've been real. I really got into uh, Super Mario 3D World. So it, when it released on the Switch, I never really got into it because um, when, but, when uh, 3D Land, right, when 3D Land came out, man, I really got into that. It was amazing. Um, at the time, it was one of my, this, my favorite mario game right so right. um i never really got into 3d world when it came out for the wii u but right now i just finished world four and i don't move on to the next world until i get all the gold flags which all you got to do is jump to the top of the flag right at the right. end of the level the stamps for each level and then all of the uh the green stars so once i um 100 that world i'll move on so I just need to clean up four and then I'll jump onto five. So um, I'm really enjoying it a lot. Like it's a really, like the level design is like a hundred percent, you know, grade a like level design. It's really good. It's not um, stagnant, you know, it's not repetitive. So um, there's some really good levels in there that make you want to play it over and over and over till you do a hundred percent it. Yeah, one thing I really liked about it was that there, like, there's probably like eight ice levels, but they're not right next to each other. So you don't go to like an ice world mm -hmm. and get iced out. Like they're right. spread out in like each world. Yeah, it's, it's a real ice way to do it. It is a ice way to do. Son of a son of a beasting. Um, 
<laughs> I'm trying really hard not to swear just to make it easier on Austin who edits the podcast. Um, and I'm making so, it harder on you. Yeah, got a Nintendo Switch. God, is there anything Frank Caliendo? But is there anything better than finding like a, an entire Mario game you haven't played yet? <laughs> like that's it's got to be it's awesome. I know that, that's so. Well, great. What, and then one that just really sucks you in. Yeah. Like that's all you can think about during the day. Mm. Well, and that's why I'm so excited for this. And Coach, have you been playing anything else, or is that mostly it? No, that's it. Okay, because I want to talk about my experience with that game too. Yeah. Um, that's why i'm really excited for this as somebody that like played the crap out of this game on the wii u um i had read and i don't have a source for this unfortunately i had read it as we were preparing for the show but apparently the game is already like the third best-selling switch game like um in a launch period like that launch couple days or whatever it is like it's the fastest selling um uh, third fastest selling switch game so far um for that launch weekend time frame and that makes me really excited because so many people missed out on this game on the Wii U because the Wii U was a disaster. Because and um, yeah. it was. <laughs> it was a commercial success. Everyone loved the Wii U. It, it just makes me happy that people are actually playing this game. Um, as, and like I said, it's because I loved it on the Wii U. It's a super, super good Mario game. And it's truthfully like, I love Mario 64. George is showing his Wii U gamepad. I love Mario 64, and Elijah's showing his Wii U gamepad. I love Mario 64, but I honestly think Mario 3D World is probably like my all-time favorite Mario game, just because it's unique. Um, it kind of takes that 2D Mario formula and like flips it on its head. Like it's still somewhat 2D, but also 3D. It's like just very interesting, and I, I really dig the way it plays. Um, so I'm I'm excited that so many people are are getting into it, and I, I did want to touch on too, just because Coach didn't touch on it. Um, we played the online multiplayer. Um, Andy and I were able to play with Coach online uh, the first day it came out, and it works pretty well. There's a little bit of lag though, which uh, kind of yeah. sucks, just because with a game like that, you know, with a platformer, it, you know, you kind of need like precise movement, and um, it just didn't work super well but it was still good enough that it was playable um i just wish it was a little better but of course that's nintendo for you so but yeah i'm loving my time with that game the only other thing i wanted to touch on quickly is that i beat ghost of tsushima and um Woo! phenomenal game phenomenal game it's probably my my trio of like best ps4 games is probably tsushima god of war and spider-man like i just love all three of those titles and I eventually <laughs> why bloodborne isn't on there yeah i didn't the thing is i didn't play enough of it i played about it's halfway through spider-man yeah i don't think it's better than spider-man i don't think, I don't um, think it's better than spider-man so i got you <laughs> i just love tsushima i do want to go back and get the platinum at some point um but that ending i was not prepared for that choice at the end i was like oh yeah i think this is pretty straightforward I'm not going to spoil it because I know Coach hasn't played it. Um, but I was like, yeah, I think this is pretty straightforward. Like, yeah, you you know, this is the good choice. But then you get to thinking about it. You're like, oh, maybe not. So <laughs> See, it's my just only a problem, pretty interesting ending. My only problem with the game is that it's called Ghost of Tsushima. And the fact that you have like a skill tree called Ghost. True. And you're like, oh, yeah. you also got Samurai. It's like telling it's like, you where to go. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, oh, yeah. man, like I wonder what this game is going to be about. <laughs> like, that's my only problem with, is the name. <laughs> I'm not going to really say anything because my big problem with it was kind of story related. So I'm going to, but yeah, it's kind of like the game forces you to go that with that skill tree in a way. Well, that, I'm like, I think we talked about this oh, before, okay. but it's just the fact that like, you could be like honorable and do everything right. 99% of the time. But then it's just like the one time you you kill someone like in a less than honorable fashion, like as a ghost, and it's just like, oh, your uncle says like that's not the, it's not the way we raised you. It's like, bro, like I did it like ninety like ninety nine out of a hundred times. I did it exactly I, I right, did the best I could. Yeah, I, I guess the thing <laughs> was for me why that wasn't really a problem for me was because like I don't know, I'm all about that vengeance. So like the second I started getting like assassination stuff and I love playing games like oh, this yeah, health wise. So I was all about that, that just like brutally murder everybody situation. So the story didn't really bother me because that's how I was playing the game. And that was like the mindset I was in, but I can see how 
you know, if you wanted to play more samurai style, um, you know, later on story wise, like it doesn't really Vibe. line up. Yeah. 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 And the game's like, so, no, I understand. I understand that complaint. But again, that just wasn't how I played it. Before we get into news. Uh, we're going to hit some questions quick. I missed a question a couple of weeks ago when I was last on from Chris Chamberlain, good friend of the show. Um, so I just want to touch on it quickly. But he said, Austin, what's your favorite game on the PS5 so far? What's your favorite feature? And how were you able to finally get a hold of a PS5 since they're still so rare to find? Um, my favorite game so far, you know, I actually haven't really played many actual PS5 games. The only ones I've really played so far have been bug snacks and demon souls everything else has kind of been backwards compatibility stuff um so i guess demon souls i love demon souls so far i'm not super far into it but beautiful game and i'm about to dive deep into it i think so my favorite feature um i just love how fast it is i think that's pretty you know well stated at this point but it is a super fast system and then lastly how did I get a hold of one? Well, I followed a bunch of Twitter accounts that only would tweet out whenever PS5s were in stock. And just by chance, there was one time um, this one guy that I followed, he like tweeted out the PS5s were in stock at Best Buy like minutes before any of the big guys did. So like Wario 64, Cheap Ass Gamer. Um, he was like five minutes before any of them. So I think just by you know, chance that this person was way ahead of everyone else. And I happened to see it. That's how I got one. Yeah. Elijah, how long did it take you to secure one? And coach, how long did it take you to secure a a Series X? I stood in line for six hours. (laughs) Okay. Coach, how about you? Okay. So it was before Black Friday, but it was just one of those, it's either Wario 64 or, uh, cheap ass gamer but as soon as i saw it and then austin even said that um there was going to be a lot of stock at mm-hmm. gamestop so it was already known that on a monday or something like that so i was at a parking lot just sitting there trying to refresh on my phone and then i got lucky and uh was able to get through yeah nice. I, think, I think i secured mine like back in september when it was like hey, they're going to have stock at noon on Sunday or something. You know, like they let you know like a couple days in advance. Didn't you have to get a bundle? <clears throat> I did have to get a bundle, but I spent like 45 minutes like refreshing the page, trying to add one to my cart, and then like a half hour yeah. refreshing the page, trying to check out. But I did have to get a bundle with like a year of PlayStation Plus, a second controller, Demon Souls, and Miles Morales. So that was like super expensive. And I was planning on buying pretty much all that stuff except like a year of playstation plus anyway demon souls i probably would have grabbed on sale but like i i wanted miles right. morales anyway i wanted a second controller anyway um so you you might have to compromise to say, at least that's a pretty good bundle <clears throat> yeah you might have to compromise and, and get some extra stuff um if, if bundles do become available just because i think a lot of stores are more inclined to sell bundles but <sighs> i don't know also it's awesome like i love my playstation 5 there's just not a lot to play on it right now, man. Like not a lot yeah. of like next gen experiences. Like no. Demon Souls is probably the most next gen experience on the PlayStation. Yeah. And even then it's like, if you don't have a 4k TV, is it, is it really worth it? Like all the details are incredible on my non 4k TV, but I know it's not going to be as, as wowing as, as it is like on a, on a better display. And there's just not a lot of mm-hmm. other stuff like the, Honestly, and the, the biggest draw for it is found out. probably like the PlayStation Plus collection, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. But if you're listening to this podcast, you're I found out and you've already played a majority of those. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I found out only certain uh, 120 monitors will work with it, also, which makes sense because I could not get it to acknowledge my monitor as 120. I wonder why. Interesting. No idea. Like all all 120 TVs will work with it. But only certain monitors will acknowledge it, which is really weird. At some point in the next year, and maybe, you know, if we get another, if that $1,400 stimulus <laughs> check goes through, um, I do want to pick up an LG CX, which is like kind of the big TV to get right now. Um, look, because it has that variable refresh rate. Look, I, I, I want a 120 TV because like I have Dove May Cry 5, which I haven't even started yet because I specifically want to play it in 120. 
uh, Neo 2 free upgrade. Neo 2 is in 120. Super yeah. excited for that. But when they announced it is a priority to get Apex Legends in 120 FPS this year, I'm like, I need a 120 TV for this. Yeah. <laughs> because right. that game is a game I play almost every day. I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast before. Uh, I bought a house. My my girlfriend and I bought a house together. Right. Uh, yeah. We're, I think, closing day is like the end of March. Uh, so we have like nice. a, a storage unit all locked up in San Francisco that I think we were going to get shipped out here um, and then move our stuff into it. And in that storage unit is a 65-inch Sony Bravia 4K UHD nice. TV. So I'm just nice. so excited to like finally see these games. I'm playing on like the the 40 inch TV that I blew all my money on in college. So it was like eight hundred dollars <laughs> because that was just it was a different time. Coach, I'm sure you right. remember trying to buy a TV like 10, 12 years ago. Right. <sighs> yeah. Um, for me, like I'm I don't regret, you know, jumping into this gen, the new gen, you know, um, because what they're doing, which is smart, is developers are putting in that extra, you know, that graphics, you know, increase, increase of, right. you know, um, and of course the uh, frame rate stable. So just being able to play uh, Jedi Fallen Order at a, at 60 frames per second is just like, it, it blew me away. It was so amazing, you know, and now that, um, Metro Exodus, we don't know when, but at some point this year, Metro Exodus is going to get the same treatment. So, mm -hmm. yes, there's a major lack of games, right? But um, developers and um, I don't know how much for Sony, but I know that for, uh, you know, Xbox, you get that free upgrade, yeah, you know, right. for the most part. So, yeah, and it's the same way with Sony. Uh, most of them are free upgrades. Like I said, uh, Neo 1 and 2 just got their free upgrades. Metro Exodus is coming. Um, Avengers, some of them are, even. Yeah, Avengers comes out. March 18th. 18th. That's a free upgrade. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then s some games even, they're not technically an upgrade, but like Ghost of Tsushima got a patch that runs at 60 frames per second. God um, of War. God of War. Yeah. God of War. Yeah, I'm, that's, that, well, that's the thing. I, I'm not going to pretend that like the new generation isn't awesome because it is, but like it's a lot of like yeah. quality of life improvements. You know, yeah. it, to me, it it doesn't raise the ceiling right now as much as it raises the floor, if that makes sense. Yes, like right. in terms of like yeah. incremental value for everything you already own. And so like, coach, I'm sure you had an, yeah. an amazing experience on Series X with just the seamlessness between like the 1S generation into this current generation, right? Like, I'm sure that's awesome, but there's nothing like cutting edge next gen amazing right now, honestly, except for maybe cyberpunk and demon souls, at least on PlayStation. But I don't 5. think we'll get that for at least a couple more years, though. No, for sure. But yeah, like, I agree. I'm just saying, like, there's not like a killer app that's only available on next gen right now. In, what in was the killer app on PS4 and Xbox One when it first came out? Was there one? Uh, I'd say on PS4, it might be Killzone, because like the big thing they show off that game, like look at this game. But and it's a pretty game. Yeah, it is. It uh, still is. Yeah, I can't really think of. And that's why yesterday I asked Austin as we were playing Division. I said, you know, now that you have a PS5, uh, and you were saying beforehand how, you know, you you didn't see it at the like quality of life upgrade like you couldn't see that as being a like mate as major of an increase and austin's response was it's much bigger than he thought yeah i, I mean it really is and just you know my two cents on the the situation i agree with george i think they're really mm -hmm. you know as far as true next gen stuff it's not really there yeah. yet or cur current gen I, I don't know where we're at on that terminology yet <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's not really there. I mean, yeah, there's Demon Souls. Yeah, there's technically Miles Morales, but supposedly it still looks pretty good on PS4. Um, God, follow this. But what, what I will say is that for me, as somebody who unfortunately doesn't have much time to play games anymore, who, I mean, I really haven't for the last two or so years, there's a lot of games that I've missed that are now getting upgrades. So like Control, I didn't play. Um, uh, Jedi Fallen Order, I didn't play. Even you know, somewhat more recent squadrons I didn't pick up and that's getting an upgrade um, at some point they, they announced. Um, 
I think those are the big things for me, even Tsushima as well. I, obviously, I just played through on my PS5. That's for me the the biggest drawing point, and that's why I ended up buying one. Um, is not so much that like, yeah, there's Demon Souls and Miles Morales, but for me, it was more of like, okay, here's all these games that I've like been an idiot and bought on sale, and knowing I'm not going to have time to play. Right. But you know, later on, because they're now getting upgrades, it's like, well, maybe I'll jump into them finally. So and, and they look that's better. Why they play them. beta, play better. Like uh, my f- yeah. friend, actually, Chris, who sent in the question, uh, he right. messaged me the other day because he got on the division two on PS five. Yeah, he said, yeah. whoa, whoa, these load times. I can't go back. Yeah. Like division we were, we were saying, I, I can't go back and play that on PS four now. Like right. the load times are massive. Uh, Alden, who we were playing with is on a PS four and you could see the massive difference in load times. He's like, all right, I'm fast traveling to you guys. And I was standing there like where his, where his character was going to be coming in and just waiting and yeah. waiting and minutes. waiting and waiting and, and I'm, I'm austin and i are just standing there already yeah like the load times are massive and even like massive. call of duty modern warfare with the um and mm. it was it was like i think about 30 gigs update for xbox one and or xbox series x and probably ps5 but that looks amazing like i'm at the very last mission so i'll get it this week right but you know like these are still new games to me because I didn't get a chance to play. Yeah. Right. But I dare not play Spider-Man or God of War on my, it's a PS4 pro for crying out loud. I'm sure it'll look amazing, but I don't want to rob the experience of playing it for the first time on the PS5. So that's why kind of waiting for, uh, for those games. Like George said, it's not so much that it raises like, has a higher ceiling now, but it can't be understated how much it raises the floor. And it's one of those things you don't really understand until you actually experience and play it yourself. And I think the thing, and we can move on after this, I think the thing that's so cool about that with this gen is that was not possible last gen because Mm -hmm. with the PS3 and 360, you know, not until later, at least, the Xbox One got backwards compatibility for 360 games. But obviously Mm -hmm. PS4 can't just play ps3 games so it's cool that all these games for the first time we're now able to be like okay these are all games i already own i can still play all of them and a lot of major titles are getting free upgrades that i can take advantage of i think that's just the coolest thing so um i'm really happy with my ps5 so far though i love it side note i just learned i want to say like a day or two ago the grip you know how the grips have the like it's kind of oh, yeah. there's a surface there did yeah. you learn what that is yeah it's the it's the sacred it's symbols the, place, all the sacred really symbols yeah. Forty thousand of them really small on the controller that's so cool Th- that's what makes up the grip so i i find that so fun just on the same topic alden also sent a question he said will elijah finally admit four months in that sony and microsoft botched that botched this launch you can't find consoles anywhere unless you have psychic powers. So I think it is a it's a mixture of on Sony and Microsoft and on uh company like uh what what's the word I want to use? Like you know, Re- places like Walmart and retail Target. stores, yeah. Yeah, retail stores. Um because if they would have waited a little bit to put out these consoles, there would have been much more stock. But also, I think Walmart was the first company that said something like, yeah, we're going to try and make sure we're going to do stuff to make sure bots can't get these consoles and no other company is doing that. So scalpers are still buying up these consoles like crazy. Well, I think Amazon did some, didn't they uh, cancel orders or something like that? Or somebody canceled orders, but... um... Yeah, we might have. I mean, and yeah. that's why I, I, I can't, you know, we can't put it on uh, PlayStation and Microsoft for these scalpers buying up all these consoles. Like we if they weren't doing that, everybody I know would have the console they wanted. But also, if they would have waited a little longer, there would have been a lot more out there. Well, here's the thing is they're competing with Apple. And for that chip, 
That's what yeah. this is. I think that this yep. is the biggest thing is the chip. Yeah, you yep. have the the bots and everything like that, but the reason why there's not a lot of stock is mm -hmm. because of that chip. Yep, you know, exactly. so they could only they could only squeeze out so many. And when they get them, you know, they're rushing them out so they can make money. Oh yeah. Well, but, that's like when Switch first came out. I remember reading that they were they were like shipping them by air to get them to places yeah. faster and i think that's uh some of what uh playstation and microsoft have done too well and i was just going to bring up because i saw this article a couple weeks back but the um ceo of amd which is obviously both the series x and ps5 use amd cpus and gpus um she came out and said that there is a shortage obviously of cpus and gpus right now um, and she feels like that shortage is going to continue at least through the second half of 2021. Yep. And that she did specifically reference the PS5 and Series X as being, mm -hmm. you know, involved in that shortage issue. So I think, you know, the bots are a problem. But at the same time, Sony and Microsoft, I think, are trying as best as they can. I don't yeah. think they're like purposely not making no. enough. If if either place had the ch had the choice and be like, yeah, we can put 10 million units out there right now. I doubt either of them would be like, no, let's not do that. Well, and the thing I was going to say is, if I'm not mistaken, both Sony and Microsoft have already come out and said that this is for both of them. It's been their biggest <laughs> seen, launch like, of all yeah, time. They've seen record numbers on both. And so I don't... My problem with saying they botched the launch is like, you know, if it's a humongous, you know, launch at the time of coronavirus, like there's only, there's just so much they can do. Yeah, you know, and I agree that the bots are a problem, and I hope that websites figure that out moving forward. Like, I mm -hmm. hope they figure out some sort of new anti-bot technology. I or know there's a is. there's a big thing in the UK that like they're making that completely illegal. Yeah, Good. but you know, if if these consoles are selling like crazy, and it's also because coronavirus, everyone has more money to spend. Well, not everyone. A lot of people have more money to spend. Those that have had their jobs still. Yeah. Um, they haven't been traveling. They haven't been, you know, spending as Going much money on, on gas or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. So they have more money. Those that have kept jobs throughout coronavirus mm -hmm. have more money now to spend on stuff like this. And that's why last year gaming like exploded. Oh, God. Um, yes. The market exploded last year. I mean, it skyrocketed. And it's because people well, just had more money to spend on it. Well, that that's what Coach was talking about with just like the secondhand market with like games and stuff. Like it's right. Like I, I collect GameCube games. I collect original Xbox games. They're getting harder to find and they're getting way more expensive. And it's right. because it's the same thing that's happening with like rookie baseball cards and like, you know, key issues in comic books. Like everyone, like you said, like they're not traveling. They're not going on vacation. They're not going out to bars. They're not going out to movies. The people right. who are still fortunate enough to have their jobs, like they're just not spending as much money living as, you know, right. as they yeah. were before because there's less to do now. And so they're spending that money yeah, somewhere. Um, I'm and not going to gonna... try and get a pair of Air Jordans either. Oh, <laughs> like legit. Don't even try. Bro, joke's on you. I got a pair of uh, 84s. Like I got the Jordan 1s for Christmas. They were freaking Well, awesome. I do too. But um, I mean, like, I can't wear they're them almost because there's impossible to find. Eight feet of snow everywhere. But, uh... Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I get, Sweet like, little how many... dog outside. <laughs> but how many, how many console launches have been, like, been completely bungled? You know, like, the Saturn was a disaster. All of them. Yeah, Wii. like the Wii was a disaster. Uh, the Dreamcast, probably like not the worst, but it's it's always usually like the more expensive consoles that are like, oh, there's plenty of stock on those. Wonder why? Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's a pandemic. I'm not going to fault UPS3. Sony for or Microsoft for the limited availability, especially when like there's only so many factories open right now. There's only so many chips that that can be made. As Coach brought up, like that's a great point that everyone is using the same chips now. And that's right. a problem. Um, but I no, think I the problem is, uh, you know, like I said, the, the factories and there's more demand. More yeah, people yeah. want exactly. games. And it's I don't a, see it getting better of... either. I mean, you can't find a decent graphics card. No. You know? No. And, okay, so at some point, whether it's tomorrow or at some point in the future when Nintendo reveals the Switch Pro, don't even try to, I mean, like you could try to pre-order it, but I guarantee you like within a half a second, it's going to go out of stock. Oh God. You know? 
So yeah. it's it, this isn't going to end for next generation and the next generation after that. It, it's it's always going to be tight. And well, it's, it's, it's the new hotness, you know, everyone wants to mess around yeah. with the new hotness and like yeah. no one's safe from this. Like McDonald's came out and announced issues. Yeah. Where, like they announced like the 25th anniversary of, of Pokemon and they had like a special Happy Meal. I went out, I bought two Happy Meals. I didn't think twice about being like, but can you give me 15 extra packs for $2 a pack? Like that never crossed my mind because I'm not a piece of crap. Um, but like, you know, I bought a Happy Meal for my niece. I bought a Happy Meal for my girlfriend. And then I got like a regular meal for me because I'm a fat adult who just likes quarter pounders um but like even those are like being scalped you know <laughs> like you can go on ebay right now yeah, like i saw on yeah. facebook marketplace a whole bunch of those for sale it's a travesty the mcdonald's near me has a sign that uh they will not sell them apart from like you have to get them in happy meals you can't mm. buy them separately i saw someone buy a hundred happy awesome. meals just to get the cards and like to the person's oh credit God. like they well they have like a big like card channel and it's like all for giveaways and like they bought a hundred okay. meals they donated all the food you know like that's like the best okay. case scenario that, yeah of someone yeah. doing that but like not everyone is a good actor operating under good no. faith but no. just i don't know like as the pandemic has shown us if something can be exploited it's going to be exploited and it's it's really hard it's impossible even to like fault microsoft and playstation for it's not like they're just making they're making the devices and they're filling the orders. And then it's the people who act as middle right. between them and uh, the customers. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's their systems that are failing. And again, I don't even, I don't even fault them that much because it's just like, how could we possibly know that there's a 16 year old in Leeds UK who's just like created a script that will buy every single thing that becomes available. Like how, how are you supposed to prepare right. for that? You know, especially if you're just like some manager at like yeah. a Walmart in the middle of nowhere. Like if you're not getting help from corporate, and like screwed. with the PS, yeah, with, with the PS4 and Xbox One, you could just like, oh, pre-order start today. I can just walk in the store and pre-order one. Mm -hmm. But right, this was th completely different, and even I never expected this. Also, do you guys feel a little guilty for too for like next gen stuff and like all this drama when it's just like it is such like a terrible state of the world right now? Like I was, I was a little drunk when I pre-ordered mine, just because it was like a Sunday. It was like one of the last like nice weather weekends of like the the year, like in September. And I just remember like you know drinking my beer on like the porch of the place I was quarantining at, just like refreshing. Like oh God, I hope I get one. But then at the same time, I'm just like, what difference does it make? Like it's eight hundred people are dying a day, a thousand people are dying a day, three thousand people are dying. A day. It's, it's just like really hard to like care about it sometimes, and like just the current state of the world. I think we talked about this a little bit on like the depression episode last week, but it's just like, man, things are such a bummer. Like I don't even think video games can pull me out of it right now. So I'm just going to curl up in a ball emotionally yeah. and just not yeah. deal with anything. Um, I, I think one big thing for me that helped me separate everything was, you know, I've been very close to everything going on. My mother is a paramedic and uh, not last month, but in December, you know, she got COVID and I was terrified. And what was I doing when I wasn't, like, down there to make sure she needed food, drink, whatever? I was playing PS5. It was the, it was what helped get me through that week and a half. Because, to be honest, I've never told her, her this or anything. But, like, I would wake up in the morning terrified and right away go check and make sure she was okay. Mm -hmm. So, like, I would... I would spend my day on PS5 just to kind of distract, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I was, I was playing like single player stuff, stuff, very story based, something I could really get into and focus on. And it was what got me through everything. So like, I, I do feel bad for everything that's going on, but I don't feel bad for getting this or anything mm -hmm. because I know other people who, have got new guitars yeah. to like be their like distraction okay. through yeah. all this. I know other people who have got like who just got like I'm just gonna buy a ton of books to read. Right. This this is my distraction. This is my guitar. Sure. So I, I don't feel bad whatsoever for getting it or anything like that. Yeah, I think it has something to look forward to and you know I 
I agree with George. It's like kind of a weird juxtaposition, I suppose, as far as like, yeah, I just spent $500 on the system, but like a crap load of people don't even have a job right now. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, it's unfortunately, you know, like I said, it's, it's kind of a, you know, you have to take care of yourself too a little bit and do what you can. And unfortunately not everyone is, you know, in the same position, but exactly. That's it's just the unfortunate reality of life, I suppose. But anyways, <laughs> speaking of fortunate realities of life, Republic Commando might be coming to switch. Why don't you tell us about that, coach? All right, let me find it. <laughs> okay. Wow. What a train At least he was ride. ready. I know. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to read it first and then give my impressions. Okay. The well-received 2005 Star Wars game Republic Commando looks set for a new launch on the Nintendo Switch. A tactical first-person shooter, Republic Commando was originally released on PC and then the original Xbox. Set during the Clone Wars, it lets you play as a clone trooper and command the rest of your squad alongside you. Let's see. All right. So overnight, Switch eShop data miner, NW Player 123, noticed the game had been added to the Nintendo Store servers ready for release. Its developer is listed as Aspire. I think it is. That's how you A S P Y R. Yeah, I yeah. guess. I always read it as Asper, but yeah. Right. Which has previously handled ports for various other Star Wars games, such as. George's favorite episode one racer. So okay. So um, this is pretty big because I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a cool thing. I have it on um, Xbox one, right? So you can buy it and it has the upgrade. It's, it's widescreen and everything. And, and they enhanced it for the, for the Xbox one X. So um, I'll get that. You'll probably have that same look and feel, but I mean, to have it on the Nintendo Switch, I mean, that would be pretty cool, too. And if somehow they could get the gyroscope controls, like in um, Doom, like the Doom 2016 eventually got a patch for the gyroscope controls. And the same ones that are in um, Breath of the Wild when you fire your arrow, that would be amazing. So um, it's, it's good. I have it. But definitely for the Switch. I would get it if Limited Run announces that they're going to have a physical copy. This is a game I never played, and it always kind of bugged me that there was like no, aside from the the three or original Xbox like backwards compatible version. It always kind of bugged me that there was like just no love for this game. And same thing with Rogue Squadron. I'm hoping you know those at some point get ported as well. But mm-hmm. I'm just glad that more people are going to be able to play this. I know. Um, I, I've always wanted to play it, and so if it's it such a good game, if it is real, which it sounds like it is, I'll, I'll definitely pick it up and and play mm-hmm. through it. So, it was one of the f- first games that I reviewed back in 2012, 13, 14, when we were doing reviews back then, right. and I loved it. Like I really got into it. Usually, I try and have my reviews about seven minutes. But this was like nine, ten minutes somewhere around there. So I really loved reviewing that game. It, it means a lot to me. It's one of those games that, you know, you, you're asked, pick five if you're on a, you know, on an island by yourself. That would be one of my first games I pick. Right. I really like it. I don't know if it's like a island game for me. Coach, I respect your opinion. I respect your opinion on Star Wars, especially. Um, I know you know your stuff when it comes to a galaxy far, far away. I am hoping that this is, you know how like the insane trilogy was like a test bed to see the market uh, temperature on, on a new crash game. I'm hoping this is that because like, I really like this game. I think it hasn't aged super duper well. Like to me, it feels like a cross, like it feels like a diet version of like an old rainbow six game, mm-hmm. like a very, very light feature rainbow six, three, especially I think, um, because that was on the original Xbox also. And I really like it, but it's also like, man, there's just a lot about it. I replayed the first mission probably back in like November, December. And um, 
yeah, there's a lot that I didn't like about it that I remember loving as a kid. Because, like, this came out when I was, like, 16. And I had an original Xbox, and I just got a TV in my room. So, like, everything was coming up Millhouse for, like, sophomore year of high school, George. And uh, I remember just, like, playing this game until, like, my knuckles hurt. Like, I, I loved this game so much in high school. 30-year-old George has some issues with it. But uh, I'm really, God, I want, like, when Respawn announced they were doing a Star Wars game, I assumed it was Republic Commando 2. Like, just given their their track record, given their pedigree, I, I just assumed it was going to be a first-person shooter. And so, God, I, I want this game. I want to get the platinum in this game. I'm going to play this game uh, for a billionth time. Hopefully, they put in online co-op so we could all play together. That would be a blast um but man i want i want more like i want a modern take on it yeah for sure and i i think it could be sort of a testing ground i wouldn't be surprised by that the only reason i'm not so sure about that is because now they've done that for episode one racer for the jedi knight games uh like all all of the old like xbox ps2 pc uh, Star Wars games and Episode One Racer are coming out now again. Yeah. So right. the only re- that's the only reason I'm not sure if there's like a test bed. I think it's just hey, Aspire has the rights to these games, and we bet people will buy them. That's fair. Um, they were always the port studio for like Mac because like I've had a Mac since I was like a, a kid, mm-hmm. and like they always were the ones who brought the Star Wars games to Mac. So like really hoping it's not just one of those like i know it is but like god i hope it sells well i think um but a title like republic commando that's the game that people want you know um more so than episode one racer or jedi academy right i think um even though there's a a need or demand not a need but a demand for those i think republic commando um that would be huge because it left off on a cliffhanger yeah. So um, I just could see that that game, you know, translating into um, current gym so easily, you know, that will get everybody involved. Like you can make it an online squad shooter, mm-hmm. you know, and you can keep adding maps over two or three years, you know, um, to make it to where it is. Uh, it's legitimate for, you know, forever how long. So, and you never know now that any, not anybody can make a Star Wars game, but it's opened up now. I would not be surprised if we start seeing more games like that, you know, being um, either remade or sequels to. For sure. And like, we kind of yeah. like the the Jedi Academy games or the Jedi Knight games are like fine, but like we kind of just got the best version of that with Fallen Order. Like I think Fallen Order is better right. than any yeah. of the the Jedi Knight games. Like those yeah. were great for their time, but like it's it's twenty twenty one, and like Fallen Order is the modern like representation of that series, you know. But like we haven't gotten, and like no one cares about arcade racers. I know I'm like one of ten people who like is dying for like a, a brand new four K beautiful uh pod racing game but like man right. like it's just squadrons is really interesting because like that is such like a tactical game like that game feels like rainbow six is it siege but just yes. like in a 3d space with spaceships because like you have to pick the right operator and like that one is a like, perfect counter to this other vehicle out there and like there's objectives and like it's basically just like one long like uh what the tug of war game you know on a galactic right. scale uh and so like I, I i think you're right coach like i think this is like the one or not the one but a thing that's definitely missing from like modern contemporary star wars game it's just like give me something shooter and nerdy and like you just did it for space so don't tell me it can't be done on like a, a ground level you know and there was no jedi you know that's what yeah. was cool about yeah. it you know no you were like a friggin wetworks team like a black ops team for yeah for the republic it was awesome you were a lieutenant but it's okay <laughs> you were an officer field officer okay. yeah my mistake well Sorry. with that we'll go on and head into our final segment for this week elijah kick us off with our trivia of the week so this week's theme is wait you didn't start out as that so for the first question, 
I'm going to have you all answer at the same time, like on your phones or whatever. And then I'll have you give me your answers. So for the first question, Devil May Cry originally started out as what game? Oh, man, this is definitely something I should know. And I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to know this. And oh, I know. I got it. That's why I said the first question is always going to be the easiest. one. I think. I think you I said remember. Devil May Cry, and I cursed your name. I'm like, crap, I don't know anything about Devil May Cry, but okay. <laughs> Wait, do you not know the answer, Coach? Oh, I know it. Okay, okay. good. I was going to say, I, I feel like you, you should know this, if I right. have the correct answer. Okay, is, are we all everyone good? everyone ready? I'm good, yeah, hit me. All right, Coach, what do you say? Resident Evil 4. George? Resident Evil 4. Austin? I just said Resident Evil, but I'm assuming that also counts. Yes. Resident Evil 4. The first uh, first draft of the game was being done with Kamiya as the creative director. And it was so different. But Capcom was also like, but we like this too. <laughs> and ended up making Devil May Cry. Right. So I remember, fun fact... Before Resident Evil 4 came out, back when IGN was a good website, they showed images of, I think it was Leon, and he was wearing his brown jacket, but there was like ghosts or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very early, early image, and we're all like, whoa, cool, because, so, you know. That will come up, actually, on, I think, if I decide to do it, next week's trivia. Okay. Okay. Uh, next cool. week's theme will be Resident Evil 4 trivia. Neato burrito. So <laughs> for the Corn next tortito. question, this one is much harder. Uh, of course. There was, there was a DS game called Dimension the Ward, but it was originally pitched as a game in what series? Oh, shoot. Uh, I've played that game, so I, I know what kind of game it is. I want that game. And I don't, this is like way off. I'm just going based off of like what that game is and like the themes of that game and a similar game that came out. So I'm probably completely wrong. But we'll the, see. The game was originally pitched to be a part of a series. Yeah. And that company said no. So then they released it as the game Dimension the Ward. Is everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Coach, what do you think? I don't know. Fatal Frame? George? I originally wrote one answer. I changed it. So I put up Silent Hill? Question mark. Austin? Condemned. Condemned. Oh, all three different games. <laughs> the correct answer. The company, Renegade Ops, brought the game to Konami and pitched it as a Silent Hill game for oh. the DS. Oh! Wow. And Congratulations, Kon sir. Konami said no because they didn't like the idea of a small team, like unknown team, working on the Silent Hill series. Hmm. Then... Turns out they didn't they like started the work any team working on the Silent Hill series. <laughs> <laughs> then they started working on Dimension the Ward 2. And came back to Konami again about making it a Silent Hill game. And Konami's response then was, we don't want to put a horror game on the DS. <laughs> so twice they tried to make a Silent Hill game. And That's Konami was like, nah. The only reason I said Condemned was because it, if I remember right, the stories were somewhat similar where it was like a prison or something. And... um. So but Condemned, I don't really know anything about Condemn. So Condemn takes place in a bunch of apartment buildings. Oh, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. the, the answer I deleted was Eternal Darkness. Um, hmm. I've never played that game so bad. <laughs> You're bringing back memories. That game was fire when it first came out. Everybody was talking about that. Yeah, game. that game. It's still like one of the spookiest things, or like most surreal things, because like the TV I was playing it's it on. Psychological horror, isn't it? Well, the or TV thriller. I was playing on was like yeah. a dinky little Sony, so it had like the same exact volume bar. So <laughs> like you just, it just bar? looked perfect. Like everything they did was just 
perfect for my situation. I understand not everyone is in that situation, but good grief. Uh, <laughs> so good. I, I will let you know now for the month of October, the four weeks are going to be trivia about specific horror series. I like it. It'll you be only tri- asked questions about horror series so far, and it's February. So, like, that doesn't really mean anything to me. <laughs> yeah, no, no I know. It, it's changing next week. Okay. Um, But in October, I'm going to do one specifically about Resident Evil as a whole, Silent Hill as a whole, Fatal Frame, and I haven't decided on the fourth one yet. Can you give us a heads up so we could kind of, like... Crit. Yeah. <laughs> this week. We I think you did, play I think you did just give us a heads up. <laughs> I well I I will say this next week's theme is unreleased games or canceled games if you want. Ah, like that. Okay. And the first one is a very easy one which I know everybody will know. Scale the bound. second already got it. The second one <laughs> The second one I bet almost no one will know which will break my heart. But yeah. Okay. Oh, George, no. George with two more points tonight. Yeah. Well, that does it for this week's show. Like oh, wait, enough. there's only two questions? Yes, yeah, I'm doing it. two a week. Oh, man, I was already ready. <laughs> I was like, let's go. See, Coach is having fun now. Before we started, he's like, I'm probably not going to be able to do it. Or whatever. <laughs> I just have to do a lot more. <laughs> it's probably like August, September when I get another one right, but okay. <laughs> See, I told you you would know the first one. I did Thank say you. that. I appreciate yeah. that. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for listening. As always, um, you can find us pretty much on anything, but you already know that because you're listening to us. Um, If you're on a platform where you can leave a review, please do so. Obviously, Apple Podcasts is the big one for that. Um, Even if you're not listening on Apple Podcasts, if you have an Apple account, leave a review for us. It really does help. Um, Mm -hmm. If you want to submit questions, you can do so at bit.ly. That's bit.ly bit.ly slash frame skip Q. Um, you can fill out that question form there, or you can also send them into our email address. That's frame skip podcast at gmail.com. You can find our actual social media pages. Our Twitter is at frame skip pod. Um, our Instagram is also at frame skip pod. And our Facebook is facebook.com slash frame skip pod. Um, you can follow us individually on Twitter. Elijah's at Local Lizard Man. George is at GB Loftus. Coach is at Frame Skip Pod. Woo. Seth, who's not here tonight, is at Seth S. Taylor. And I am at Austin J. Eller. Thank you all for listening. We'll be back next week with hopefully some reactions about what's going to be a phenomenal Nintendo Direct. They're going to announce Metroid Prime 6 tomorrow. Wait, hold on. Yes or um, no? Do they talk about Republic Commando at the Direct tomorrow? Yes. Yes, Yes, Coach? They do. You'll be able to download it that night. Oh, I would cry. Do they? I don't know. No, but... All right, you both say yes. Elijah, do they talk about it at the... I think they will. Okay. I don't think they will. Okay. So, so far we have... Republic Commando and Metroid Prime 6. So it's going to be a great show. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be back next week to talk about that and whatever else happens in the next seven days. See you guys later. Smoochies. Peace.